2001 was a year where Michael Schumacher and Ferrari stamped their authority upon their opposition, with arch-rivals Mika Hakkinen and David Coulthard stuttering in their McLarens, the Rogan master gradually crushed everything in his path and set his sight on chasing all-time records. It would be a year where Williams began to bear the fruits of their burdening relationship with BMW as lead driver Ralph Schumacher and rookie Juan Pablo Montoya made a name for themselves and scored their maiden Grand Prix victories. It was also the debut seasons of future world champions Kimi Raikkonen and Fernando Alonso, both of whom were quick to attract the attentions of Ferrari, McLaren and Renault. But it was a season that began with tra tragedy as a marshal named Graham Beveridge was killed at the season opener in Australia. He died after being struck by debris from a collision between Jacques Villeneuve and Ralph Schumacher. Using the crystal score system, I have graded every participating driver with a score out of 10 for every race they competed in. If a driver fails to finish a race because of a mechanical failure or an accident via no fault of their own, their score for that particular race is excluded from their season's average score and is considered invalid and void. From every eligible point score, their scores are added up into an aggregate score and then divided by the number of races they achieved a score. For example, Johnny Herbert scores 70 points for his season's total score, whereby his score of 70 is divided by the 10 races he finishes. This gives him a crystal score average of 7.00. Only 22 drivers are included on this list as four part-time drivers, Gaston Massacane, Ricardo Zonta, Thomas Enger and Alex Jung have been excluded for competing in fewer than the minimum of eight races required to be included here. Starting from the worst driver, I will Count down until the best driver of 2001 is revealed. At 22, it's Jensen Button. After a scintillating season at Williams, the young Briton was brought down to earth with his move to Red Benetton. Button had been forced to make way for Colombian hotshot and IndyCar champion Juan Pablo Montoya, and he suffered a nasty dose of second season syndrome. He was dismantled by his illustrious teammate Giancarlo Fisichella, who outqualified Jensen for 13 to 4, outraced him 8 to 1, and outscored him 8 points to just 2 for Button. JB suffered the ignominy of qualifying 21st in three consecutive races at Imola, Catalonia, and Austria, and his team principal. Flavio Briatori labelled a 21-year-old as a milepost and a playboy. After scoring his only points of the year at Hockenheim with a season-best fifth place, J JB's qualifying performances improved as he broke into the top 10 in the last two races at Indianapolis and Suzuka. Despite Renault's new 1-10 degree engine proving gutless, JB retired five times and finished 17th in the Drivers' Championship. The 2009 World Champion was 2001's reject of the year, but JB would continue with the newly branded Renault team for 2002. 21. Tarso Marquez Brazilian journeyman Tarso returned to F1 after three years of intermittent appearances in IndyCar racing, but just like his previous appearances in 1996 and 1997, Marquez showed no signs of becoming Brazil's next world champion. Lucky to start at Melbourne after a ragged qualifying lap saw him 6.3 seconds slower than Schumacher's pole time and therefore outside the permitted 107% rule, 
the Minardi driver would enjoy a year of being destroyed by Spanish sensation Fernando Alonso. Marquez qualified 22nd and last a whopping 12 times, one of which saw him excluded from starting the British Grand Prix due to being outside of the 107% rule. The stewards at Silverstone were not so kind and with good reason. After Malaysia, the only time where Marquez outqualified Alonso during 2001, the Brazilian was outqualified 12 to 1, often being more than a second slower than the Spaniard. Marquez took Minardi's best finishes of the season with ninth place at Interlagos and Montreal, but largely thanks to the huge attritional rate where under today's point system Tarso would have scored four points. After finishing 13th and last at Spa, Marquez was replaced by Malaysian Alex Young for the last three races of 2001 and never appeared in F1 again. 20. Luciano Berti if you're wondering why Brazil struggles to produce F1 talent nowadays, you need to take a look at this Sao Paulo native. Making his debut at 2000 Austria, where Bertie stood in for a sick Eddie Irvine, Jaguar gave their 26-year-old test driver his full-time debut as Johnny Herbert's replacement. However, Luciano struggled as Irvine outqualified him 4-0 before moving to Prost to replace Pay driver Gaston Massacane. Bertie was out qualified 5 to 3 by John Alesi and then 2 0 by Heinz Hald Fredson. Luciano took his best result of 8th at Melbourne on Montreal, but mostly thanks to a high retirement rate. Bertie's best qualified positions were 14th at Interlagos and Catalonia, but his worst results were 21st at Melbourne and Monaco. Bertie's racecraft was questionable as he was unable to avoid Michael Schumacher's slowing Ferrari at the start in Hockenheim and his season ended after a monster crash at Spa where he was lucky to escape with concussion and bruises. Luciano became Ferrari's test driver afterwards but never raced in F1 again. 19. Enrique Bernoldi an early member of Red Bull's infamous junior driver program, the Karibtiba native would prove to be a nuisance to leading drivers when being lapped. Despite our qualifying veteran teammate, Jos Verstappen, 10-7, barely anyone looked at Benaldi as semi-competitive F1 material. A highlight of Benaldi's debut season was his antics at Monaco where he held up David Coulthard for approximately 40 laps for position. The Brazilian took his best result of the season with 8th in Germany for Barrows ahead of teammate Verstappen but this was heavily achieved due to the high attrition rate in the final race at the old 4 mile layout at Hockenheim. Thanks to Red Bull's money, Enrique would race again at Arrows in 2002 at the expense of Jos. 18. John Alesi 2001 proved to be the final year of popular John Alesi's F1 career where he appeared in 200 and race, 201 races in total. Despite some heroic drives, his consistent qualifying speed was beginning to evaporate as he would outqualify Luciano Berti just 5 to 3 and then lost out to Jarno Trudy 4 to 1 when he left Prost for Jordan. Nevertheless, points at Monaco, a season's best of 5th at Montreal, and a point at Hockenheim helped Prost claim 9th in the constructors' standings. However, financial issues made 2001 was. Prost's final year as an F1 team as no buyers were found in the off-season. Alesi took his final points finish with 6th at Spa before bowing out with a whimper thanks to a huge collision with Kimi Raikkonen at Suzuka. 17. Olivier Panis 
2000 saw Panis spend the season testing for McLaren, where his mileage and feedback was highly lauded by Hackner and, and Coulthard. His reward was a seat at BAR Honda, but it would prove to be a trying season for the Frenchman, despite scoring five points after finishing fourth at Interlagos and fifth at Austria and taking five top 10 starting positions in the first eight races, BAR's declining performance affected Paddy's far more than teammate Jax Villeneuve. After a best qualifying result of sixth at Montreal where brake failure wrecked the Frenchman's hopes of a strong finish, Panis fell backwards and suffered his worst result of a qualifying result of 17th at Monza and Suzuka. Benevier would continue to race for BAR in 2002. 16. Pedro de la Rosa Brought in by Jaguar for his home race at Catalonia thanks to Luciano Berti's wretched early performances and Gaston Massacani's early sacking, De La Rosa had a steady 2001. His first Jaguar outing started poorly as the Spaniard qualified 20th and crashed out after five laps thanks to a collision with Heinz Alk Frenson. Despite six retirements, De La Rosa scored points at Montreal and Monza and was beaten 7-6 to six in qualifying by teammate Eddie Irvine. His decent performances, along with three top 10 qualifying positions in an unfamiliar car, saw De La Rosa kept by Jaguar for 2002. 15. Jax Villeneuve. Scoring the final two podiums of his illustrious career at Catalonia and Hockenheim, the Frenchman started what would prove to be a long and steady decline. He outqualified Olivier Panis 10 to 7 and took and qualified in the top 10 eight times, but his race pace was inconsistent. He scored 12 points and claimed 7th in the Drivers' Championship, which helped BAR finish 6th in the Constructors, but his commitment to F1 was beginning to wane. Rumours of JV joining Ferrari, McLaren and Williams distracted him despite his long-term contract and he suffered the ignominy of qualifying 18th at Indianapolis behind Fernando Alonso's Minardi. Nevertheless, Villeneuve continued alongside Panis for 2002 at BAR. 14. Heinz Held Frenson 2001 would prove to be a disaster for the three-time Grand Prix winner as Frenson was sacked mid-season by Eddie Irvine before his home race at Hockenheim. The Germans started the season strongly with points finishes at Melbourne, Sapang and Imola. However, a late race retirement at Interlog where he was heading for a podium before be began a downhill tumble in form. After San Marino, Heinz Aldfret never scored again and he was outclassed 9-1 to one by teammate Jarno Trulli. A crash in practice at Montreal saw Fredson sidelined from the race with concussion but his Silverstone race performance saw him finish 7th behind the two Salvers of Heinfeld and Raikkonen. This proved to be the final the straw that broke the camel's back for Eddie Jordan. After this he moved to Tross thanks to Alan sacking a lazy in return where he qualified a sensational fourth at Belgium but starting on the grid would scupper any chance of a great result and process hopes of surviving into 2002. Friends had moved to Arrow soon afterwards. 13. Nick Heidfeld It seems harsh to place Nick at 13th but 2001 saw a litany of strong performances throughout the grid. Rescued by Sauber after an atrocious debut season at Prost, the 24-year-old remind everyone why he was once so highly rated by Ron Dennis. Despite consistently outscoring, outracing and outqualifying teammate Kimi Raikkonen throughout the season, it was felt by many throughout the paddock that Heidfeld was relying on his vast experience to achieve his results. He picked up his maiden podium at Interlagos, but a heavy attrition rate was a co major contributor to his fortuitous drive in mixed conditions. Despite being a McLaren junior driver during his junior formula career, 
the German would be shocked when McLaren announced Kimi Raikkonen as Mika Hakkinen's successor at Monza. Heidfeld continued at Sauber until the end of 2003, 12, Eddie Irvine. The Ulsterman had a decent season despite little progress from Jaguar as Ford hindered the team's progress with a merry-go-round of team bosses with Neil Ressler, Bobby Rahal and Nicky Lauder taking control at various points during the season. Despite 10 retirements during the season, Irvine clinched Jaguar's maiden podium at Monaco, but the season otherwise was one of major disappointment. Irvine would continue for one more season at Jaguar in 2002. 11. Giancarlo Fisichella. The popular Roman drove the wheels off his Benetton in the team's final season under the Italian clothing banner. Despite the card struggling earlier on in the season, Fizzy scored a point at Interlagos, but he would have to wait until Hockenheim to score again. Spa Frankenstein would pro pro provide Giancarlo's only podium of the season, which would prove to be Benetton's final F1 podium. Fizzy Keller had the me measure of softball teammate Jensen Bunn, beating him 13 to 4 in qualifying and finishing ahead of JB eight times in the nine races they completed together. However, the, the Italian had had enough of Benetton's inconsistent progress and chose to join Benetton for 2002. Number 10, Jarno Trulli. The Italian finally came of age in 2001 as he obliterated teammate High Town Frenson and drove his Jordan Honda to its limit, but eight retirements limited his capacity for points finishers. Imola saw Trudy run in third place ahead of Mika Hakkinen before the first round of pit stops, where he eventually finished fifth. Trudy scored 12 points, finishing ninth in the Drivers' Championship and out qualified Frenson 9 to 1, Zon. 2-0 and John Alacy 4-1 in a season where Yordo established himself as a qualifying master. Trudy, however, had had enough of Jordan's lack of reliability and a 27-year-old joined the rebranded Renault Sport team for 2002. 2001 would prove to be the final year of the great Finn's F1 career where some were remembered were one still wondering when Mika is was going is going to announce his comeback from what he declared at the time as a as a sabbatical. However, the year started badly with a high speed crash at Melbourne when Hakkinen was running second to Schumacher during the time of the incident, thanks to a suspension failure. This sadly brought back flashbacks of his near fatal. Adelaide crash in, two in 1995 and from this point onwards his 2001 season was a real struggle. His last lap retirement at Catalonia from what looked to be a commanding victory would be moralised the double world champion further and teammate David Crawford would therefore become Michael Schumacher's prime competitor for the world championship. Hakkinen would finish seven times behind Crawford in the eight races they competed together and out and he was outscored sixty five points to thirty seven but Hakkinen did manage to outqualify the score nine times to eight in their final team in their final season as teammates. Sadly, the renowned qualifying maestro failed to score a single pole position during the season but picked up two more career wins at Silverstone and Indianapolis to crown his glittering career. Number 8. Rubens Barrichello The Brazilian's second season at Scuderia Ferrari proved less fruitful than 2000 as Barrichello would firmly become the team's wingman during 2001. Despite scoring 10 podiums, he failed to win a single race as Michael Schumacher outraced him 10 to one and and Schumacher outscored Rubens a hundred and twenty three to just fifty six points for the Brazilian. Ferrari's number two finished third in the drivers' championship, but this was poor considering 
Marinello's huge progress over the season in comparison to rivals McLaren and Williams. Even worse, Barrichello failed to score a single pole and out-qualified Schumacher just once, which came at Monza after the events of 9-11 had distracted a new double world champion, quadruple world champion, I'm sorry. Barrichello would continue at Ferrari until 2005. 7. Jos Verstappen, despite scoring just one point all season, the Dutchman's mighty performances in his tiny arrows did not go unnoticed. His likely fueled stints at Sapang and Austria saw Verstappen run as high as second in the early stages before dropping back to seventh and sixth respectively with a second pit stop required. Unfortunately, the team's lack of finances meant Jos was dropped in favour of fellow veteran Heinz Al Fredson, which would further besmirch the Lee Field based team's reputation. Verstappen would return in 2003 to race for Minardi. Number 6. Kimi Raikkonen. The fresh faced Finn entered F1 under a FIA imposed probation as team bosses in the paddock were concerned over Kimi's lack of experience, having started just 23 car races prior to entering the sport. Raikkonen joined Sauber as the reigning Formula Renault UK champion, but an intensive testing program meant that Finn wasn't prepared in time for Melbourne, where he scored a point in his debut. Despite losing the teammate battle to the more experienced Nick Heidfeld in most metrics, Ron Dennis was impressed and signed Kimi as a Placement for Mika Hakkinen at McLaren for 2002. Highlights of Kimi's debut season included fourth place finishes at Austria and Canada, plus a fifth place at Silverstone, where he hammered Heidfeld heavily in these three races alone. Number five, Ralph Schumacher. Michael's younger brother would finally make his mark on. F1 with three remarkable victories at Imola, Montreal and Hockenheim. However, he did become increasingly overshadowed by rookie teammate Van Pablo Montoya's performances as 2001 progressed. Ralph could have achieved more if it wasn't for the car's poor reliability suffering several retirement, but he would also achieve his major career pull at Manicor in France. Ralph's and Williams' progress was hindered by the returning Michelin's inconsistent tyres whose heating issues also frustrated Benetton, Jaguar, Minardi and Prost. Ralph would continue to race for Williams until 2004. Number 4. Fernando Alonso. Very rarely did a Rocky impressed this much in a McLaren, but that's exactly what the 20-year-old Spaniard achieved in 2001. Minardi entered 2001 on a last-minute rescue package from Paul Stoddard and his European aviation company, but Alonso somehow dragged his recalcitrant car and mixed it with the likes of Benetton, Prost and Jaguar on occasions. He destroyed all the teammate Tarso Marquez in most metrics except for their the best finishing positions but they were driving a car incapable of scoring points regardless. Fernando's mesmeric drive at Suzuka caught the attention from key scouts as he finished 11th ahead of race winners Frenson and Panis. Throughout 2001, Fernando qualified 18th in a 22 car field six times despite Minardi's PS01 estimated to be 4.4% slower than Michael Schumacher's Ferrari on an average qualifying lap. Its aging Ford Z-Tech engine carried 30 more kilos than that of its nearest rivals, plus it was 160 brake horsepower on BMW's engine. Alonso would spend 2002 as Renault's test driver. Number 3. Juan Pablo Montoya Colombia's biggest Grand Prix prospect did not disappoint as he displayed flash flashes of the talent that made him a rookie car IndyCar champion and an Indy 500 winner. Despite erratic performances in his early races, with numerous collisions, 
Montoya picked up three second places and a maiden victory at Monza. He also clinched three poles in four races at Pocketheim Spa and Monza, where he maximised the capabilities of BMW's potent engine power. Montoya dazzled sporadically with as he looked a likely winner in just his third race at Interlagos before Verstappen took him out, diced with Schumacher at, in, at Austria before retiring with hydraulic failure and lost a probable victory at Hockenheim thanks to a, a BMW engine blowout. Montoya continued for Williams until 2004. Number 2. Coulthard, David Coulthard in a year where the Scotsman came to the fore for McLaren, his championship challenge would be scuppered by persistent software issues. Taking two wins at Austria and Interlagos and ten podiums throughout the season, DC had been seeing level on, point tw uh, on 26 points with Michael Schumacher for the championship lead after Imola, but the new launch co control implementation could, would cost his team dear. Stalling on the parade lap at Catalunya Mon and Monaco, David could only salvage a couple of fifth place finishes in these races, which swung an advantage to Schumacher that would prove to be insurmountable. To deepen McLaren's misery, Williams' partnership with BMW began to blossom, but their own poor reliability meant they were incapable of taking points off Ferrari consistently. Mercedes engine failures at Montreal and Hockenheim along with a first lap collision at, with Bjorn Trulli at Silverstone meant Coulthard was forced to surrender his championship hopes at Hungary. Number 1. Michael Schumacher The maestro would prove to be in a league of his own in 2001. However, the misfortunes of his rivals and near bulletproof reliability of his Ferrari would help him to build an unassailable points lead by Hungary where he won the championship with four port races to go. He equalled Nigel Mansell's record of nine wins in a season and broke Alan Prost's record for most career wins with his 52nd career victory at Belgium. To further illustrate Michael's dominance, he took 11 pole positions and teammate Rubens Barrichello would outqualify the German just once. He scored more than double that of his teammates' points haul for the season and helped for screw the rear Ferrari win the Constructors' Championship by a staggering 77 points. 2001 saw Schumacher equal Prost's four-wheel championships, leaving the German just one behind Juan Manuel Fandro's five-wheel championships. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to Crystal Racing, and I'll see you again next time.